Hi, this is Haley from Loop by Loop Studio, and today I want to show you how I draw digital patterns on my iPad using an Apple Pencil. So I use an app that's called Sketchpad, and I can show you it right there. I just downloaded it off the Apple Store, it is, or the uh, I iTunes store and it is free to use. I find it convenient and simple. Um, the first thing you have to do when you open up the app is you have to pick your canvas size. Um, I usually just pick something big like 2400 by 2400 but there are all these different preset sizes you can use so I'm picking something that's sort of poster sized. Um, that way it's nice and big and anybody who wants to download this pattern and enlarge it it's not going to be too fuzzy if they wanted to make this into you know a, a two foot by three foot rug. Um, so there's all sorts of tools at the top such as a fill tool, a symmetry tool, a shape tool. Those are the ones I use the most. Um, I usually start with my shape tool and I go in and make a square or a rectangle for myself. Um, and down on the left hand side you have all these different mark making options, pens and paint brushes, and whatever you have chosen there is going to come up. Um, you know if you make a, a square or a rectangle or a circle it's going to come up in that kind of mark. All these different pens and pencils have uh, settings for size and opacity, so you can really customize it to whatever kind of line you're looking for. Um, I like to use the pen line for my squares and a lot of times for my drawings with a pretty big uh, line so the lines are nice and bright and bold and people can see them. Um, and then you can go in and use some of the other drawing tools. Today I want to make a little autumn pumpkin, so I'm using my symmetry tool uh, to make a pumpkin that's perfectly symmetrical. I like found this tool not that long ago and I kind of love it. Um, so I'm going in, you can see obviously what I'm doing on the left side is being replicated on the right side. Um, I can't really say I love the shape of this pumpkin, so I'm going to use my back arrow to kind of get out of there. I really find that um, using the back, making lines and then erasing them with the backspace is a lot easier than trying to get in there with an eraser even though I have an array of erasers I can use um, on my drawings so there's my little symmetry tool I'm gonna get rid of that to get rid of it you have to just click it again uh, so it's not highlighted um, and I'm gonna go in and then start drawing some of the details of my pumpkin and I'm just messing around you know trying to get the shape I want I'm used to drawing with the uh, you know big sharpies on big shapes large canvases so doing all this like very fine uh, detail work, it just takes me a few times, but using the iPad and doing it digitally is so much easier because you can just erase things so much quicker. I can also add color very easily. I can color things in with my paint brushes and my markers, but I can also use the fill tool, which looks like the little paint can up at the top. And whoops, I accidentally filled in with black. So to get color, you're just going to click on the color key. You're going to go in, pick a color and just lightly tap. Um, everything that you want colored in. Now, if you haven't made a full, complete shape that where the lines are touching each other like a circle, it will fill in uh, everything that's on your canvas. So you have to make full, complete shapes where um, the lines are fully touching um, another area. So I'm going in and picking some greens and some browns for my stem and my leaves. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this pattern. So I am just going to play around different things. And maybe I'll do some leaves or something. Um, not sure, but that back space is invaluable because I never know what I'm doing. I'm just messing around, seeing if I can come up with an idea. So here's some autumn leaves. Nope, don't like that. Um, and I'm just going to kind of mess around. Again, you can see how I'm just, I'm trying to f make complete shapes. I find it a lot easier to lift my pencil the least amount. So I want to kind of make my leaves in one stroke of the pen. Um, that way they're full and they're complete. Um, that way I, I can fill them in with color in a little bit while. So here's maybe like an oak leaf or something with some pointier leaves. Um, just trying to embody the autumn spirit, if you will. So here we go. Let's see what's going on here. Doing more leaves. Trying to really fill in both sides and see if I can make a composition that I like. And actually, when I'm looking at this, like a pumpkin's probably better for me on a square format. But I picked rectangle. Again, it's always good to try out different things. Can't quite get the leaves 
leaves the shapes that I want them to, but I don't know, maybe sometimes by drawing more on it, I can make it better. Trying to now create some layers of leaves. Let's see. So now the leaves are becoming piles of leaves. Maybe some going off the edge. Let's see. Yeah, I don't like any of that. I'm just gonna go through and erase it all. And again, not erasing, just uh, backspacing like it never happened. And I went one too far. Um, so I accidentally uh, deleted the brown that's inside my stem. So I just had to go forward using the forward arrow. All right, let's try this again. Let's see if I can get some leaves and let's see if I can get them the shapes I want. I'm already a little disappointed with this. You know, maybe some vines. Vines might be the thing that I need. More pumpkin vines. Let's see. Again, just kind of messing around. The pumpkin itself is symmetrical, so I'm trying to come up with a composition that's asymmetrical. And I was just using my fingers there to um, pinch and enlarge, so pinch uh, move my fingers away from each other and then um, in order to um, enlarge the view so that my my canvas becomes bigger and sometimes that's a lot easier for me to work because like I said I'm, I'm not used to doing small details like this I find it easier to draw larger um, so you can pinch the canvas with your fingers to make it smaller or bigger or turn it a certain way sometimes I even turn the iPad um, so that I can draw things a little bit easier. You do have to worry though about putting your fingers on the canvas because if you put a single finger on the canvas, it's gonna think it's a mark, like a syllabus, and it's going, I was not a syllabus, I'm sorry, a stylus, and it's going to make a mark on your, your canvas there. So you might just have to erase that or backspace that. I'm not feeling any of this. I'm really having a hard time figuring out what I want around this pumpkin. So, Let's see, let's see what else I have up my sleeve here. Um, maybe, maybe a little bird, like a, a crow or a raven. I'm gonna keep it very simple, very simple shape um, and keep it in silhouette. So what's more Halloween than, than a crow and a pumpkin? And I can go in and just do a fill on that bird um, to automatically color it in black. The fill tool is sort of invaluable to me. Um, so is, you know, the shape making tool. Um, and then let's see, let's keep, get maybe some, some more leaves or vines on the other side. Again, looking for asymmetry since my pumpkin is symmetrical to keep it interesting. So go in with a couple more you know, leaves, two leaves, a bird, couple vines coming off. Mm, I don't like that one. Let's see. Let's have it go down. There we go. And maybe another one going up. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do, let's find a color for the background. Actually, let's find the color for the leaves. So what I just did there is I d used on the color tool, there's a little eyedropper and you can use that bullseye to, to recreate any color you've already used in your composition. So that's what I did. I used a little dropper on the first leaf I, ma leaf I made. I dropped it and then I colored in the other leaves. Now I'm just picking a color for the fill outside of my pumpkin and leaves. Oh boy, I'm trying to get that little itty bitty spot in there and it keeps getting the line that I've drawn. So sometimes I, if this happens too many times, I just can't get it with the pencil that I'm using. I'll enlarge it with my fingers and I will, you know, there we go. See if I can get it. Nope, still didn't get it. Backspace, there we go. That should be good enough. And now I can pinch it to kind of get back to normal working size where I can see the whole canvas. And it'll sometimes, you know, depending on your the way you move your fingers, it'll skew a little bit. But your your piece is always square or rectangle, so it doesn't matter if it's diagonal. It's just how you're viewing it. So I probably need to 
draw in some ground. So I'll draw kind of a jagged line that'll represent grass. Let's get that in there. Pumpkins sitting in a grass field. And as long as I connect my lines from the edge of the rectangle to the pumpkin, I should be able to color this in no problem. So I wanna find a green a little bit different and darker than the leaf green. Get that fill tool and look at that, it's all filled in. There's a couple spots I had to fix just because of the, the vines were creating their own shape there. So let me get these little spots, the vine that I made. Nope. I accidentally, I accidentally filled in part of my pumpkin. Let's see, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna pinch it closed so I can make it a little smaller. And so now I'm gonna, um, I, I'm thinking like maybe I wanna make this into a jack-o'-lantern, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna create another layer and you do that just by clicking um, like kind of the multiple page button. And what this is gonna allow me to do um, is it's gonna allow me to draw a face, but it's gonna be technically or digitally disconnected from my original drawing. And you can add multiple layers and you can kind of click those layers on and off your drawing. Um, just to kind of experiment. You can always merge them if you really like something that you've done, a choice you've made. You can merge all those layers together and then, then your drawing is complete. But right now I'm just um, creating a layer because I want to kind of play around with a jack-o'-lantern face on this little pumpkin. But I might not keep it, I'm not sure. Or I might save it with a jack-o'-lantern face and without a jack-o'-lantern face and then maybe work on them, you know, another time or whatever. I'm keeping this pattern relatively simple of course because um i'm doing this video about it um normally i work on patterns a little bit more a little more detail a little more color um but you know this one is just giving you a good idea of some of the tools i use um, and you can obviously make your patterns as complex or as simple as you want but having them in digital form is really a great idea because um, you can send them to people, you can print them out, you can always have a record of them saved on your computer, all sorts of different things you can do. So here I am, I'm going to save my drawing. So I'm just going up to save and I can save to gallery, which is within their app, or I can save to my iPad, which is what I want to do. And then I'm going to go and um, save it uh, on my iPad. So I want to just click that and you can see all these other little thumbnails come up of drawings I've made. I'm going to save you can rename it or you can just keep keep whatever you know random file number comes up um, and then I am all done with that so let me go and show you how I then sort of send it to myself um, on, on the computer um, so that I can do things with it I can upload it to my website so I just go to this little square with an arrow pointing up that's the share button I save to hit airdrop um, there's multiple ways you can do this and my computer isn't coming up so I'm sending it to uh, my husband Adam who happens to be in the same room as me and it just popped up on his phone I heard him chuckle so um, that is how you um, get digital files from your iPad drive sketchbook app to the um, the computer or phone or what have you here I am clicking that little um, face jack-o'-lantern face on and off the little eyeball button so I think I'm gonna save it without it as well I'm gonna go in and save um, and that way you know you can like I said easily share them you can sell them to other people if I was going to do that and probably put more information on the drawings such as my name my business name the date um, it also drawing like this allows me just to like play around with colors and ideas I really don't consider myself to be a technologically inclined person, but I really like that I'm able to get so many ideas out and play with colors and do some unexpected things with really no consequences because I can just always delete. And every time I use the sketchbook app, I really do learn something about it. So it's just about getting on there and clicking around and playing, playing with everything um, so that you can see what's possible and uh, you know expand your toolbox a little bit. So. If you have any questions about any of this, hopefully 
hopefully I can answer something. So, um, you know, send me a message or leave a comment below and I'll see if I can, can answer um, any further questions because I'm sure I'm forgetting something. So thank you so much for watching this video and um, letting me chat with you about, you know, this little piece of technology that I work into my practice. Take care. Bye-bye.